Hi, I'm Jilly Blankenship from Baby Sleep Made Simple. In today's video, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can manage daylight savings time ending when the clocks fall back. A lot of moms write me before daylight savings is ending and they're really nervous because the clocks falling back scares moms quite a bit. For example, if your baby has a 7 p.m. bedtime and wakes up at 6 a.m., then if you do nothing, that means your baby will now go to bed at 6 p.m. and wake at 5 a.m. So the reason why moms are terrified is they're really, really scared that their babies are going to start waking super early in the morning and usually in the five o'clock hour. And they have a reason to be nervous. But the thing is, it's something that can be managed. So I've got some specific tips for you on how you can get through this daylight savings times change <laughs> without ruining your baby's sleep. In the description below, you'll see I link to an article that spells out all the details I'm gonna to give to you in this video. Okay, basically you have three options when dealing with this time change. Your first option is to prepare early. Your second option is to play catch up. And your third option is to do nothing. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a few tips for each option so you can decide what's best for you. Now it's really important to know that no matter which option you choose, there are two essential tips that you have to do in order to navigate this time change really, really well. Okay, so make sure you stay until the end of the video to know what those two tips are. They're so, so, so important. If you do nothing else, make sure you do these two tips. Okay, option A is to begin early. This works really well if you're a planner type mom, if you like being really organized, if your baby has to wake up at a certain time every day for daycare or to go to the sitter, and you really don't like the idea of just waiting and seeing. This option is for you. It's going to take about seven days to get through. So the clocks always change early on a Sunday morning. So I recommend you start the Sunday before the clocks are changing, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're going to push your baby's entire sleep schedule later by only 15 minutes every other day. So I'm gonna use an example baby that goes to bed at 7 p.m., wakes at 7 a.m., and naps at 10 o'clock and two o'clock, just to keep things simple. So what you wanna do for this example baby is the Sunday before the clocks change, on that Sunday, you wanna push your baby's entire sleep schedule later by only 15 minutes. So that means nap one is at 10.15, nap two is at 2.15, and bedtime is 7.15. Okay, so all the sleep times have shifted, but by only 15 minutes. So you're gonna do that on Sunday and Monday. I like to move slowly and gradually to give, babe, to give babies time to adapt. On Tuesday and Wednesday, you're gonna shift baby's sleep schedule a little bit later. So 15 minutes later from the previous days, but a total of 30 minutes later. So naps are gonna be at 10.30 and 2.30 and bedtime is at 7.30. Now you might be wondering, but my baby still wakes at the same time. Now my baby's just gonna get overtired because I'm extending her awake times. So hold on, remember I've got two really important tips for you at the end of the video, so just hold on to that. On Thursday and Friday, you're gonna shift the sleep schedule again 15 minutes later. So naps are gonna be at 10.45 and 2.45 and bedtime's going to be 7.45. And then on Saturday, which is the night that the clocks change, you're going to push naps and bedtime 15 minutes later. So naps are gonna be at 11, Three, and bedtime is now going to be at eight o'clock. So now you wake up and it's Sunday, the clocks have changed while you're asleep. And the cool thing is your baby who should have slept a little bit later each morning, let's say until 8 a.m. is now going to be waking up at 7 a.m. So it's the same time on the clock as usual, but you've actually shifted your baby's schedule. So on Sunday, the days of the clock change, your baby is now going to go back to the original sleep times, napping at 10 and two and having a bedtime of 7 p.m. Remember, these are the new times. Again, it's a little bit trippy to think about, and it definitely takes several days to work out. But that's an example of how you can prepare early and give your baby a gentle shift in her sleep schedule that will have her ready for daylight savings ending by the time it actually happens. Okay, now on to option B. Option B is if you want to just play catch up. So if you're like me and you'd rather just wait, let the clocks change and see what happens and figure it out from there, uh, this option is for you. It works really well for adaptable babies and toddlers, for parents that are able to stay at home or work from home or have a little bit more flexibility to their schedule. This option might be appealing to you. So what you do is you just wait for the clocks to change. You wake up on Sunday morning. Now remember your example baby normally has a bedtime of 7 p.m. and wakes at 7 a.m. and naps at 10 and 2. So your baby's gonna go to bed Saturday at his normal time, 7 p.m. But on Sunday morning when he wakes up, the clocks are gonna say 6 a.m. 
He really will have gotten his 12 hours sleep, remember, but the clocks have changed. So he's waking at 6 a.m. So he's gonna be tired a bit earlier in the day. It's a little bit trippy, but follow me. So your baby wakes up now at the new time, 6 a.m. on Sunday. And what we're gonna do is we're still gonna push the sleep schedule back by 15 minutes every other day. It's just the timing's a little different. So on Sunday, naps, nap one is gonna be at 9.15. Nap two is gonna be at 1.15 and bedtime is gonna be at 6.15 p.m., okay? So you're gonna do that on Sunday and Monday. On Tuesday and Wednesday, you're gonna push everything back by just 15 minutes. So nap one's gonna be 9.30, nap two is gonna be at 1.30 and bedtime will be at 6.30. On Thursday, push everything later by 15 minutes more. So naps will be at 9.45, 1.45 and bedtime will be 6.45. And then by Saturday, your baby will have adjusted to the time change. So you're going to go back to naps at 10, 2, and a bedtime of 7 p.m. Okay, option C is to do nothing, which may sound really appealing now that I've gone through all these details, right? The do nothing option is for those who have really, really adaptable babies. So really laid back babies or toddlers or really laid back parents who don't mind just kind of going with the flow and seeing what happens. It's also a good option if you're okay moving to an earlier winter schedule meaning your baby normally had a bedtime of 7 p.m. and woke at 7 a.m., but because it's getting dark earlier in the evenings and the sun is rising earlier, maybe you're happy to adapt to a 6 p.m. bedtime and a 6 a.m. waking. It's really up to you, and it's pretty simple to explain. You just do nothing. Okay, on to these two most important tips that I can give you. And remember, even if you decide to do nothing, it's really important that you do these two really simple tips because they're going to help ensure that your baby doesn't get caught in an early waking pattern. The strongest biological cue that we have that helps reset our body clock is the use of light. So what we're doing when the clocks change and we try to tweak our baby's schedules is we're actually altering our baby's circadian rhythm or body clock just a little bit. And as you might imagine, this is really hard to do. So what we wanna do is we want to use light and darkness to our advantage. When light hits our eyes, it sends a signal to our brain to be awake. And when our eyes sense darkness, then melatonin is produced, which is the sleep hormone. So we really want to use this to our advantage. When the clocks are falling back and you're trying to change your baby's schedule a little bit, I want you guys to remember that we need dark mornings and bright evenings. So the first tip I have for you is to make sure that your baby's bedroom is 100% pitch black. This means dark trash bags on the window or maybe even aluminum foil because they block out light 100%. I know it looks awful, it's super tacky, but honestly, if you really don't wanna get caught in an early waking pattern, then just forego interior design for a week or so and trust me on this one. Your baby's bedroom needs to be pitch black because remember the sun is going to be rising earlier and your baby, as soon as any light comes through their window, it hits their eyes and their brain goes, oh, I need to be awake. And you don't want that to be happening an hour earlier than normal. So it's super, super easy, it's super gentle, black out your baby's window with dark trash bags or aluminum foil. Now, a lot of parents go with blackout curtains, but the only thing I'll say about that is a lot of parents buy them and later tell me that they discovered a little bit of light is still able to come out from behind the curtain and wake their, wake their baby. So you may as well save money and just put up some trash bags for a few weeks to get your baby through this transition. So what's really important to know is if your baby wakes up early during the clock change transition, you need to keep him in his pitch black bedroom and you wanna keep stimulation to a minimum. So don't turn on any lights, don't start playing with him or talking with him and don't feed breakfast until a more appropriate hour. I often say 6 a.m. is an acceptable morning wake up time. So if your baby wakes at any time before 6 a.m., you wanna keep him in his dark bedroom and really have minimal stimulation because this is sending a signal to his body clock and to his brain that it's still nighttime and he needs to try his hardest to fall back asleep. So that's tip number one, keep mornings really, really dark. Okay, the second essential tip I have for you is you want to have bright evenings. Now, if you've been through my Exhausted Mom Survival Kit, you know that I'm all about setting the scene for relaxation in the evening. Because what we do to our environment helps send our babies' bodies and brains different cues that tell them to wake up and play or to relax and settle down for sleep. So I often recommend that we dim the lighting in the evening to send cues to our baby's brain and body to calm down and know that sleep is coming. 
In the week or so while we go through the clock change though, take my old advice, throw it out the window. Instead, I want you to keep the, your baby's rooms, probably the living room, wherever your baby's hanging out in the evening, and I want you to have it brighter than normal. So have all the overhead lights on in the effort of really trying to keep your baby up a little bit later than possible. Because remember, as we're shifting your baby's schedule, we're extending your baby's awake times by 15 minutes. And you're keeping him awake 15 minutes longer every other day. Now the best way to send a signal to his body that this is going to be his new time of waking and time of sleeping is to use light to your advantage. So while your baby's having dinner, you wanna just keep the overhead bright lights on, maybe keep the curtains open, let all the natural light in, and then once you go to the bathroom to do baby's bath before your bedtime routine, then you can start to dial down the stimulation and really start to send out, you know, relaxing and calm vibes. By the time you go into your baby's bedroom to do his bedtime routine, then you're going to want to turn off your overhead light, turn on a dim lamp in the corner, and go ahead and start your bedtime routine. So the only difference here is we're just having a little bit more light to our evenings to try to tell our baby's body clock to adjust ever so slightly. So there you have it. Those are my tips on helping you survive when the clocks fall back and daylight savings ends. In the description below, you'll find a link to an article on my website that walks you exactly through everything I've gone over with specific details. And if you're finding that your baby's never really slept well and you'd really like to get him sleeping through the night, but you have no idea where to start, then make sure to check out my free Exhausted Moms Survival Kit. It walks you through the first essential steps of setting your baby up to sleep well at night. And I have a link for that in the description below as well. Good luck, guys, and post a comment below if you have any questions on getting through this time change.